Okay, this is a popular WSCO8955 um, converter and power center. Um, works okay. One of the main problems is it never, I can never get it to go into bulk charging mode, which means it takes a very long time to recharge the RV's batteries should they go dead while camping. Um, there's a view inside. Zoom in there. Model 8955. Um, circuit breakers and DC fuses and what I'm going to do is replace the charging unit with um, an upgrade from a company called Progressive um, Dynamics It's a new charging circuit in there for my particular brand of converter I'm going to be removing this metal enclosure it's designed for some other brands so I'll just be taking this little unit out in here. Okay, last night I ran um, both exhaust fans and all the lights for many hours in an effort to drain a significant amount of power from the batteries. Um, the WFCO converter is supposed to engage in bulk mode um, when it senses a significant decrease in um, battery power left um, or voltage, but um, it never does. So I'm hoping when I upgrade to the new um, progressive dynamics converter it will actually do the job as advertised so there I'm at 12.6 volts 12.06 volts so now I'm going to plug it in this is just with the the stock WFCO8955 converter okay so it's charging at approximately let's get there see it 22 um, amps. It's definitely nowhere near the 55 amps that it should be charging at. And you can see here it's very rapidly decreasing, but the battery's definitely not charging that quick. Um, give it another half hour or so, and it'll be, I'll be lucky if it's down to 7 or 8 amps, which um, when you're trying to charge that with a, at a campsite with the generator, it's just going to, it would take forever to charge um, 240 um, amp hours of batteries. Okay, now I've got the cover of the power center slash converter removed. Of course, I have unplugged the trailer from 120 volts AC power. Um, that step is very important if you value your life, that is. Down below there is the stock WFC08955 charging circuit. That's what I'm going to replace. Um, it's a side benefit. I'm also going to replace this DC um, board as well came with the the new progressive dynamics converter. Okay, so the old um, charging board is already out. I gotta disconnect the wires of course, but all I had to do was remove um, a screw here and a screw here when this was in the unit. Um, just those two screw holes there in the front. You don't have to take this whole thing off the wall, at least I don't think you do. Okay, so what I'm doing here is we don't need this big metal enclosure for the WFCO converter. Um, we do need it for some of the other brands of converters, but not for one I'm using in particular. So just remove these screws with the socket. Yep. Now what I'm doing is, and of course I disconnected the 120 volt AC as well as the 12 volt DC power. I'm going to remove the 12 volt connections from the old system, the old um, charging circuit. Let's get this one out too. Okay. 
Okay. And now the 120 volt. So, of course, we've got the usual hot, neutral, and ground. Make sure you turned off the power. In this case, I just unplugged the RV from the shore power. You don't have to cap these off when the power's off, but why would you do it just, just to be safe? Okay. Let's just double check, make sure that new one's gonna fit in place. Properly, which yeah, looks like it'll be a good fit. Hmm. A couple strands came loose. That means I'm going to want to restrip, um, cut this off here and restrip it when it comes time to put the new board in, just so we're not losing the capacity of the. Okay, you got ones to all these other circuits, so I'm going to want to do those one at a time, um, just so I don't mess up with the labeling here on the front cover of the panel. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera for that because that's going to be pretty boring to watch me do each one of those wires. Okay, I'm getting towards the end of connecting up the DC circuits. What you want to make sure you do is we do one circuit at a time so you don't mix up which wires go where. That's very important. Some of them might have two wires going to one, which is fine. Just make sure you match them up. I'm getting on to the last um, DC circuit. This one powers my inverter. Okay, got all those in there. Sorry if it's not there, that's a little bit better visibility. Um, of course I have the power off here so I don't have any lights in here. I guess I could be using a flashlight, but it's daylight out. So now I'm gonna take the fuses from the old board and transfer them to the new one. You can do it one at a time because you don't want to put a 30 amp fuse where a 30 amp fuse should be and vice versa. Okay, got the wires to the branch DC branch circuits and the fuses transferred from the old DC board. 
Okay, so I've connected the battery positive to the battery positive terminal, battery negative to the battery negative terminal here. Did that using a 532 um, hex. Next thing is going to be connect, putting in the um, new um, charging circuit slash converter and connecting that up. Okay, so for the WFCO converter, Again, I apologize for the darkness, but I've just got daylight to work with here since I got the power off. Um, there's an adapter bracket here just to help secure it to the enclosure. So I'm going to attach that using the screws um, from the old WFCO um, converter charger. And let's get this in. It is plastic, so don't screw it in too tight. Okay, next I'm going to mount the new converter. I'm going to feed the AC wires. Do a little opening here. And place the DC wires. Oh, and then there is a little um, data cable. And let's make sure this goes to the correct connector. It's a four pin converter, four pin header and converter assembly. So. It goes in there like that. Hopefully this will reach. And go up through here. Okay, got it snapped in place. Now I just gotta route the wires. And we connect the positive and negative. This time the converter ones, I mean, pretty self explanatory. Okay, got it all connected up. One thing is, the fans come on and I'm seeing amperage at the battery terminal, but the oh, there's a green indicator light here that's supposed to tell me the charging mode it's in based on whether it's steady or flashing and how fast it's flashing. Oh, that light's not coming on, so I'm going to have to contact Progressive Dynamics um, figure out what's up with that. Maybe it's hopefully it's just this board here. Um, otherwise... Yeah, fuses are good. Um, looks like it's working. I'm going to go check the amperage out of the battery again. Okay, here you can see here right now it's in the normal mode, which is charging at approximately 13.6 volts DC. That's the output to the battery. I'm going to hit the manual override button. Um, again, there's a status LED that's burnt out, so I got to talk to that Progressive Dynamics, Dynamics about that. But if I press and hold this button. So now it's charging at approximately 14.4 volts DC, give or take. 
um, which will do a more rapid charge. So hopefully this works out well. Okay, and here is the final part of the installation of the um, Progressive Dynamics PD4655 converter upgrade. Um, has this thing called a charge wizard. Normally it will automatically determine the mode, but if you want to manually do it, you just hit this little button here. There is an optional way to get a, a button, um, a panel, if you want to spend a little bit of extra money and get it in a, put it in more convenient, but I don't mind this. Hit this little button here. When it lights on steady, that means it's in boost mode, which will output 14.4 volts to the battery and depending on the wiring to the battery and a few other factors um, 55 amps of charging current you press and hold this again a little bit more blinks a little rapidly it's in um, normal mode and press and hold again let it cycle through give it a second here uh, it brings really slowly. That's in the storage mode, which of course just maintains a, a trickle charge to keep the battery going. So you don't always want to put it in boost mode, but say you're camping out somewhere in the desert or whatnot, or somewhere where they have generator restrictions, and you can only run the generator for two to three hours or so, um, you go ahead and hit this button, put it in boost mode. It's going to put devote the maximum amount of current and voltage to the battery, and then fire up your generator that run for two or three hours, and your battery should be about 90% charged. That all depends, you know, that's if you have, I have two um, U2200 interstate um, golf cart batteries. If you have a bank of four or six or more bigger batteries, it's going to take a little bit longer, but still it's a lot better than the typical WFCO um, converter.